Welcome to the Boating News Show. Coming up, we look at this week's news from the world of boating. We have yet another giveaway prize. Announce the winners of those three weather handbooks to give away from last week. And we check out the latest craft from Zodiac. We see a major big outboard brand stop production for 2021. And we catch up with MDL Marina's Tim Mayer to see what the state of play is for lockdown and access to the water. Talking of MDL, a shout out to these guys, the UK's largest marina operator who are sponsoring this show. We'll hear more about MDL later. For now, let's start this week's show. So this week in the world of boating news, obviously we are now in lockdown once again. But before we talk about all things pandemic, we firstly want to talk about Zodiac Nautic. Now, the time has come to announce some big, great news for this rib brand, and more precisely, some brand new boats. 2020 has been an epic year for Zodiac, which started with a big challenge, launching the Medline 9 in the middle of the pandemic. The company fought against this unprecedented situation to launch this new boat, which was met as an incredible success. Zodiac reporting that they multiplied by five the sales compared to its predecessor, the Medline 850, despite the lockdown and late deliveries. Zodiac used this year not to stall developments, but to crack on with new designs. And 2021 is shaping up to be the busiest year for them in terms of new products in the last four years. One of these eagerly awaited events, especially by their dealers and customers, is the launch of the Medline 6.8, the first units of which will be delivered in early spring. This new boat replacing the Medline 660 will be the little brother of the Medline 7.5 and the Medline 9. It will be the mid-range boat and they have big plans for it, as they plan to deliver more than 100 units worldwide next year. Now, this newcomer will not be the only craft for 2021 from this stable. This is because the iconic open range is also expanding, adopting four new sizes in its range, 3.1, 3.4, 4.2, and 4.8. Small boats that are easy to store, easy to drive, easy to handle, easy to tow, and hopefully at an affordable price, helping you to get started boating. To know more, you're gonna to have to wait a little bit longer, but we promise um, that as soon as we have more information, we will let you know and all will be revealed. Now, Volvo Penta are one of the biggest names in the marine engine market. And this week, they have announced plans to accelerate their sustainability. They've got various different ambitions in this field to boost investment in exploring sustainable technologies in line with the Volvo Group's sustainability aims. The company will focus on its inboard and stern drive development with greater fuel efficiency and zero emissions through hybrid, electric and renewable fuels being the new direction for Volvo Penta. To support Volvo's group's sustainability goals, Volvo Penta has announced that it is to redirect further resources into accelerating its sustainability development, which is about reaching zero emissions. Now this is done through uh, fossil free, uh, renewable fuels, electric hybrid technology, while continuing to provide innovative solutions to the marine industry. And things like the IPS system, et cetera, are industry leading and superb. Well, I wonder how this is gonna sit with Seven Marine. A few years ago, Volvo Penta purchased the big power outboard company as they saw the big horsepower outboard powered segment growing rapidly. A lot of big American boats, especially um, those offshore center console craft are designed around these type of units. Well, as a result of this accelerated focus on the company's direction, Volvo are sadly gonna be putting the outboard development on hold. Therefore, Volvo Penta will stop the sales and marketing of seven marine engines from January the 1st, 2021, as well as phasing out production once customer demand is met. And I don't really understand that, but um, 
if the customer demand is there, are they going to continue moving forward or are they going to stick to their word for January? Well, the company will, however, continue to support the current outboard customer base by taking full warranty and parts responsibility for the products that they have in the field. In a statement from the company, it mentioned that they want to send a clear message and that the statement read that Volvo Penta does foresee that the outboard segment will continue to be relevant for the marine leisure market, but that they believe that this undisputable need to drive advancements in sustainable technology is where their main focus has to lie. This is why, for the time being, the exploration of new technology together with the development of their core business such as Volvo Penta IPS and Stern Drives will be the centre of their efforts. Well, on one hand, it's really exciting, obviously, to see what new technology is on the horizon from Volvo Penta and what they've been working on to bring to market over the next few years. But it's also sad to see a great outboard in the Seven Marine product that's had major investment uh, be put to one side after there is a clear passion for that brand in the States and further afield, with many craft designed specifically around that power plant with 50 to 60 foot center consoles now in existence, mainly because of these type of big outboards and the on, offshore fishing craft now powered by these units with uh, big alternators and big power to push these type of craft, often a lot cleaner than a lot of the old diesel power units. Does this now mean an end of this big outboard contender? Will Mercury and Yamaha now completely dominate the offshore center console fishing market like never before? Well, it'll be interesting to see how this develops. And as somebody that's driven a few seven marine engines, they are absolutely awesome beasts. So we'll see how this develops. We mentioned last week the cancellation of Miami International Boat Show. And also we've had obviously Southampton Boat Show and others canceled too. You may be wondering what's in store for Dusseldorf early next year. Well, in a conference tempered by caution while showing support for lockdown measures taking place in Germany and further afield, the organising team of Boot Dusseldorf has stated that time is the key factor to whether the show will go ahead in January, with an announcement due early December. They seem on the surface to be very transparent about the situation and also confident in the team behind the event. Stating strong intentions and a list of booked exhibitors across many of the halls, Petros, the Boots uh, Dusseldorf's uh, project director, has stated that focus on safety and hygiene are the key factors for a successful show. Everything is set, we are still on course, he says, and that even with PPE, they are confident visitors will feel the pa same passion for water sports. Well, Petros went on to say that safety has always been on the top priority at Dusseldorf and they are implementing a new strategy that they plan to engage additional 600 people to fight against anything that could risk safety and health who are determined to ensure hygiene and protection measures are always observed. Safety is our most important goal, he continued, and the show's team has noted that this has been the most challenging period for water sports in the past decade, but welcomed the lockdown situation, which allows time for a decrease in infection levels. Petros continued by saying, lockdown is forcing us to keep our course, but to evaluate week by week. The time allows them to re-evaluate and allows time for a decrease in the level of infection to a level where they'll be able to run the show. That evaluation will be going on week after week. And as soon as we know more, we will update you. And we, we hope that if the show can be run safely, that it would obviously be great for the industry. Now, with all of us again in lockdown, we got thinking about how we can bring the powerboat experience into our homes and offices. Well, Powerboat and Rib have teamed up with Luxim24. Now these chaps design and build high-end car racing and aviation simulator rigs for eSports. Together we have designed a seat system to build the first proper home powerboat simulator and we'll be trialing this over the next coming weeks and months ahead and hopefully put a little bit more development into it. The rig comprises of an all-alley bespoke frame 
a racing bucket seat from an old racing sponsor of mine, Corbo Seats. And this has been paired with a traditional car sim steering wheel by Fanatec, which has loads of little buttons on it, which we can then program to do different things that you'd do in the cockpit or a helm of a craft. Now our plan is to add some extra bits. We want to modify some boat gear. So we want to take apart a boat throttle and make it PC compatible, add maybe a scan strap nav pod, thruster controls, GPS, and create the most realistic home setup that you can build. The goal will be to make it a platform that we can home our navigation practice on and run some various different simulations on. Our plan is to continue to develop this further and trial some various different software along the way. And we're talking to some cool people at the moment. We'll then report our findings on what has worked and what hasn't worked. And this will hopefully enable you to be able to have a go yourself if this is your type of thing and build your own rig. But more on that soon and we'll report back on how we're getting on. Now talking on all things lockdown, there has been a lot of confusion online over the last few days with various bodies making conflicting statements for access to water and the legalities of accessing your craft during this month. Obviously the key focus is for everybody to stay safe and to stay at home where possible. But to add some clarity to the situation, I caught up with Tim Mayer of MDL Marinas to get his take on the situation. So, uh, Tim, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, obviously, there's been a little bit of confusion on social media with people commenting back and forth and things getting lost in translation. Um, so we just wanted to spend a couple of minutes to chat to you to see what MDL's take is on the latest uh, legislations, etc. Obviously, things have been changing through the week. I know, for example, on um, Facebook, um, there's been a couple of different takes on things. The ROA have said um, that uh, members may be able to access boats for essential checks and maintenance. Um, however, this would need to be agreed with their club, their um, marina or harbour authority, um, and that, they, that each individual takes their own responsibility. Um, British Marine have kind of gone down the, the DEFRA route, and obviously DEFRA have said that, well, people need to be at their primary place of residence. That they don't consider it a necessary thing for individuals to have to um, do maintenance on their boats that they could pay a third party to do that. So just wanted to chat to you for a couple of minutes to see your week's probably been full with MDL meetings and working out what on earth to do. So just wanted to yeah, see your take so that you could clarify things for everybody watching. Perfect. Tom, thank you so much for uh, letting us come on. I think the first thing I would say is compared to the last lockdown we have, I think this is probably the best place that we could be in. Um, certainly from an industry perspective, this actually is a really good place to be. And I think it's a really good place to be because actually, as you've just described, there is a really broad interpretation of what the legislation is saying for our industry. Um, so I guess from an MDL perspective, we've kind of got what we want. And what we've got is the fact that customers need to be able to look at that legislation and decide for themselves whether by them coming to the marina to do stuff on a leisure boat fits with inside it. Certainly, the um, government and the UK restrictions have said that we've all got to stay at home. This is for the reasons of protecting the NHS and saving lives. We all understand that. Um, but they have said this time, which is really different, that you can leave home if it is for certain uh, purposes. And the bit that really affects us is this point around exercise and recreation. Now, I think when this came out on the uh, 31st of October, we were probably the first company to go out and say to our own customers, look, this is what the legislation is. We're going to seek clarity on the exercise and recreational point. And once we know that, things are going to be a lot clearer. But as you've just shown, actually, the industry bodies have slightly different variances on it. But our perspective is, look, our access gates are open, the gates are open, Sports England have said that sailing is an activity that can be done. If you do need to perform essential maintenance, if you decide by doing that, that sits within the guidelines, that's entirely up to you. However, what I would also say is, though, we have some fantastic marina teams. They're always there to look after people's boats. We've still got contractors working at site. So if you can't do what you need to do, then the teams can do it and so can contractors. So for us, actually, there is very little difference apart from, as we all know, we are all responsible for making sure that we don't spread this virus and we have been instructed to stay at home. Yeah, and I've seen that um, on Wednesday there was a hive of activity at um, uh, Queen Anne's Battery um, mm -hmm. with a lot of people doing work on their boats. 
Um, the um, a little restaurant on site was f- full of people getting their last meal in before lockdown. Um, but there seemed to be a general uh, positivity um, of how MDL was handling the situation and people confident that they were um, going to be able to get things done that they needed to do. I think you know, we have some fantastic burr folders. We really have. No, it's fair to say across the estate, we certainly saw an increase in traffic going into Wednesday. And it's fair to say that has now died right back, which is absolutely how it should be. You know, We're all responsible for controlling this. It certainly isn't up to MDL to enforce whatever that legislation seems to be, because as I've said already, it is a very broad interpretation across our industry, which for everyone is a much nicer place to be in than potentially some of the other industries that have been hit really hard at the moment. Yeah, and we all want Inspire us to go away and by knuckling down and, and doing what the government says, hopefully we can put this behind us next year and all, all move forward with a, a really healthy voting season. I uh, hope so, yeah. But um, but thank you because it, it's it's really useful with social media, etc. You see so many different conflicting things and then streams of comments, etc. And things can get really get lost in translation. But being able to just sit down with you for a minute or so to just clarify that situation is really helpful so if anybody has any questions um for mdl if they're a birth holder or if they're um, somebody that's looking to put their boat with you etc um because we don't know what the next six months brings with maybe other further lockdowns etc um how how can what's the best route to go down to talk to their local dock master or to contact you no i think i think the best route if i'm honest is you can do it from home so you can go on to the mdlmarinas.co.uk website um on the home page you will see some faqs and the latest updates around the covid situation but also there are an inquiry form on there and if you fill in the inquiry form we can generally make sure someone gets back to you within about an hour to two hours um, and we can make sure your inquiry goes to the right person at the right time. Great, Tim. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, we'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you, Tim, for your time and for uh, the reference of uh, the different things that we were talking about there and the current guidance from the various different bodies. We'll add those uh, links uh, below in the description so you can check those out for yourself. Obviously, this guidance that we've been talking about, the contents in this show, is relevant on the day of filming today, the 6th of November. So if you're watching this later in the month, things may have changed. Now, last week we ran a giveaway prize to win the Adlard Coles Weather Handbook, which will be great in your arsenal of reference material, helping you to be a better prepared skipper when going to sea. Now, we're giving away three books. The winners this week are as follows. Shed Picks, John G., and another John, John Riley. Congratulations to you guys on YouTube. And to claim, just email social at powerboatandrib.com and we'll get these things out to you over the next couple of days. Now, our product this week to check out is the Shakespeare Emergency Inflatable VHF antenna called the Galaxy INFL85. Now, they say this is ideal as a backup antenna for kayaks, jet skis, uh, small inflatables, ribs, powerboats, etc. And when researching this, it comes in at around about 140 pounds um, online and on various different channelries, etc. So, what does it do? Well, this is an antenna that can be inflated via a CO2 cartridge or manually via a tube, similar to that of a life jacket, for example. However, the antenna inflates up to five foot long, offering a full 3 dB range, which is around about three times greater than any other emergency antenna. It comes with straps to allow the antenna to be mounted to stanchions or outriggers or any other vertical structures also. It comes supplied with a uh, pre-installed PL269 connector, but what's really cool about this is it has an adapter um, to adapt over to the SMA mail for use on handhelds. So if you got into difficulty and you only had a handheld, maybe you are on a kayak or a small rib or something like that, and you haven't got a fixed unit, having this in your grab bag is ace because it gives you that much larger range than if you had that sort of stubby antenna on a small VHF. Now, this also comes with a unique solderless UHF a female connector to splice the, into the antenna um, into an existing RG um, ATEX or 5.8 coax cabling of your boat. So even on the face of it, it may seem a little bit of a nerdy accessory. Actually, it's a clever bit of kit and really it stows away in a little pouch and is an ideal bit of safety kit on your boat. So we're going to give this 
away and give you guys the opportunity to add this seat to your safety kit. Yes, PBR have yet another giveaway to enter. So all you need to do is like this video, comment why you should win, and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. You know the drill by now, we'll announce the winner next week, and um, this will be a great thing to add into your safety kit. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. See you again next week. And a massive thank you to MDL Marinas who have sponsored this show. When it comes to successful marina operations, MDL offers incredible experience and great expertise. Established in 1973, they are now the UK's leading marina and water-based leisure provider and one of Europe's largest marina groups. Currently operating 20 major marinas and boatyards, which are home to about 7,000 berths. They have also added two idyllic holiday parks to their collection, providing the perfect getaway by the water. Find out more at mdlmarinas.co.uk.